everyone. This is a Mars Hill Latin 4 Lesson 22 lecture. All right, so last time in Lesson 21, we introduced ourselves to deponent verbs. So remember that a deponent verb is a verb that has passive endings, but active meanings. So passive endings, active meanings. So it looks passive, but it means an active thing. So uh, we covered in lesson 21, the first, uh, first conjugation deponents indicative. So this week we're going to talk about the first conjugation deponents subjunctive. Okay, so this gives us a chance to review both our subjunctive and our passive forms, uh, which can get a little bit rusty sometimes. And we'll talk a little bit about what subjunctives do also. And also in this video, um, we will talk a little bit about a couple of voc vocab items uh, that are on your lesson on page 69. Okay, so just like the indicative of the uh, first conjugation um, deponents, we're going to expect and we're going to find the same forms uh, as the first conjugation passive. Okay, so for example, in the subjunctive present, let's look at that. So in active, remember, let's, let's do a little review. The active of amo, right? Active subjunctive would be amem, ames, amet, amemus, ametis, ament. Okay, and then the passive, we have amer, etc. Ameris, ametur. So we're going to do the same thing with hortor. Hortor changes to horter. So we have horter, horteris, hortetur, hortemor, hortemini, hortentur. And that is our active meaning, but passive form version of our subjunctive present. Okay, what about our imperfect subjunctive? You remember from uh, the active subject normal first conjugation ones um that we have in the uh the imperfect subjunctive in the active we have just the present active participle i'm sorry pre present active infinitive plus uh all, um the personal endings so for the active we get amarem amares amaret amaremus amareti samarent what about the passive we have Amar er. So we have amare plus er. So amare er, amare reris, amare tour, amare more, amare mini, amare tour. Okay, and hortor is going to be the same. So we have hortare er, hortare reris, hortare tour, hortare more, hortare mini. Or tarentor. It's a mouthful. Okay, you'll notice here the imperfect subjunctive of the deponent takes its stem for the imperfect, takes its stem as the what it would be in the present active infinitive. So really our pres our infinitive for hortor is hortari because it's passive, but in the imperfect uh, subjunctive we're gonna take we're going to pretend that the second principal part is hortare and then add our personal endings. You see that again, horta, sorry, hortare, hortareris, hortaretor, etc. Okay, now then we don't have a future here of hortor, but we go to next to our perfect. So the perfect is the same as our perfect subjunctives of the first conjugation in the passive. So we have the fourth principal part plus the present subjunctive of sum. So that goes hortatus sim, sis sit simusitis sint, right? 
uh, you'll notice that it's really important to have the all of your forms of sue memorized so that you can use them to form all almost all your verbs in the perfect system okay so then we have the pluperfect uh, the pluperfect subjunctive is the fourth principal part plus uh, the imperfect I'm sorry not the imperfect yeah the imperfect of the subjunctive of same so that's SM so we get horta to SM assess asset assemus assetis ascent all right and again we don't have future perfect for hortar okay so all we've seen there is that the present uh, of hortor is exactly the same as the present passive system of uh, of a first conjugation word and it's the same for the other tenses and that's what we got so deponents do not have a present active infinitive this is what i said earlier but the stem of the imperfect subjunctive is identical to what the present active infinitive would be. So it would be hortare. So we just add hortare plus r ristor more mini tour. That's our passive personal endings. So you can look at this chart, that chart on your own. Okay, on page 69, let's read this. So second conjugation deponents, this is moving on, second conjugation deponents are conjugated exactly like the passive of regular second conjugation verbs. See the grammar appendix for the complete conjugation of the model verb vera or. Okay, so you'll see that in the back of your book. Um, as in the first conjugation, there are five exceptions to the rule of passive forms with active meanings. These exceptions are the same in all deponent conjugations, so all four conjugations. Here they are. The first exception, the present participle, which is verens, verentis in the second conjugation. So that's active form and meaning. The second exception is the future participle, veriturus aum, that also has active form and meaning. The third, con the third exception is the future infinitive, which is veriturus aum plus essay. And that's active form, active meaning. Okay, then we have the gerund, uh, verendi, which is active form and meaning. And finally, the gerundive, verindus aum, and that is passive form and passive meaning. So the first four have are an exception because they're active in both form and meaning. And this, the fifth one is an exception because it's the passive in both form and meaning. Okay, the dictionary entry for deponents is the same as for verb, regular verbs, only in the passive. This is review again from last time. So, vere or vere re, vere to assume, where we have the third and fourth principal parts condensed together, vere to assume, okay? All right, so a couple of notes here on page 69 towards the bottom of the page. Use the comparative form of kertos with fakio to say in form, or literally make someone more certain. Okay, so kertos will agree with its noun or pronoun in gender, number, and case. So here's an example. Legatus imperatorem kertiorem fecit. So the lieutenant um, literally, the lieutenant made fecit the general imperatorium more certain. But uh, colloquially, the way we translate translate that is the lieutenant informed the general. So kertus, uh, the comparative form of kertus plus vacio means to inform. Okay, another one. According to Henley, uh, Polikior takes the accusative with a future infinitive. Okay, however, 
Polycaelor may also take a complementary infinitive. So, for example, Polycentor se reperturos esse. So, they promised Polycentor that they would find out that, so, se reperturus esse. That's an accusative with infinitive, where se is the subject of the clause. Another way to use it is polycentor reperire, so they promised to find out. That's just a complementary infinitive, where remember that complementary infinitives fill out, um, they complement the meaning of a verb, okay? All right, and so in this, in form four, we use both constructions with complementary infinitive construction given in the vocabulary. Okay, so then you have five more vocab to learn, and that's all for lesson 22. God bless you.